Mr. Guppy. Yep, Guppy, like the kind that live in fish bowls. It's now, unfortunately, my new boss. Sadly, Mr. Edgar, the former owner of the Brookdale Times, passed away under unspeakable circumstances. Rumor has it, he was asphyxiated by a hooker dressed up like a nun. Oh! Tie that there rope around my neck. Doggy wants to be on his leash. All right, <sighs> listen, Edgar. Uh -huh. Okay, that's maybe extra, fifty extra. But I say to you that everyone who has looked at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You know, that's actually really good material. Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> I hope you found Jesus or whatever he was looking for. Anyway, everybody is in complete shock at the Brookdale Times, but that didn't even prepare us for what was about to come next. In walks Mr. Guppy to the office. He looked like a swollen potato with eyes and facial hair. I'm a man of the people, he says. Listen up, everybody. I am a man of the people. If there's one thing I know more so than anybody else, it's what the average common working man and woman want to read. They don't want to read about fitness. They don't want to read about Christian news, gardening, kale. Edgy. That's me. Uh-huh. To be 100% honest, to be frank, your column is boring. For God's sakes, it's 2021. Who in the hell is that religious? John. Yes. You're going to take Angie's column from now on. But, but I don't know about local and national politics. No, you don't. You used to. From now on, Hollywood. All right. I'll try the Hollywood angle. That's my boy. <laughs> Daryl! Daryl! You're not writing about health anymore. Health and fitness is a waste of time. Now on, you're gonna write about... I don't know yet. I'm, I'll let you know. Go! Go write! Wilson. Yeah, you're gone. Oh, you're gone. Go. Angie, you're still here. You've got ten minutes to clear out your desk. <laughs> <coughs> to my left. Tree! Tree! Fire! My name is Willow. Yeah? Close enough. You're still fired. But I do the ads and the classifieds. I guess that's important. Dad, sit back down. Kelly! Kelly. <laughs> ah, Kelly. Congratulations! You're fired too. Do you know who my father is? My father's Conrad Rothschild. <sighs> nope, still don't know him. You're still fired. I'll get to the two of you later. You got all that down? I want you to type it up, and I want you to send it out. And you're fired too. <laughs> Later that day, Mr. Guppy asked to speak with me. I thought for sure I was gonna get canned. <laughs> no, but it was much worse than that. <clears throat> so, I understand you got Quite the following there, kid. Like UFOs? The paranormal? Um, well, listen, listen. You know why I keep John around? Because you write simple enough a child could read it. The average man doesn't want big words and long sentences. 
Us working men, we want something that's easy to read. Not written by some Ivy League arrogant jerk. Now keep the vocabulary simple. <laughs> nice logo. That's hilarious. Listen, kid. You don't want to write about UFOs? That's fine. But you can bet your sweet ass is fired. Need the job, so here I am about to interview some guy about aliens. I don't even know what his name is. It's here somewhere. Subject's name is Rick Jones, born 1965 in Bergen County, New Jersey. Car repairman and conspiracy theorist. No children. Hmm, one pig named Lewis. Married once in 1982. Divorced in 82. Uh, Rick contacted the newspaper October 3rd about a possible incident regarding extraterrestrials, or a battle between good and evil, as he puts it. Oh, God, I would not even take this job if it wasn't because he was my boss's friend. You know, I don't know what to think of this. There's no, no evidence of any kind, no phone calls that were recorded with the police, nothing. Just his word. And I can't believe I'm saying this word, but what the fuck am I doing here? Hmm. Hello, Mr. Jones? Uh, it is Mr. Jones, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I'm Amanda Singer with the Brookdale Times. Nice to meet you. I like this place. I used to have my AA meetings here. Were you followed? Was I what? Were you followed? It's a simple yes or no question, damn it. No, no. I mean, I don't, th I don't think so. Okay. Take these. Never be too careful. They got mirrors on the inside. So, you're going to need them after this story. Why? Because they'll be coming after you. The government? <laughs> From this world and the world we cannot see. <clears throat> well, um, now, as you know, that all the articles at the Brookdale Times, they give the option for participants to stay anonymous or not. All right, so let's get this thing started. I got a sick pig at home, damn it. Not, gonna, not, not one for you to chat. Okay, just, just give me a second. Are you nervous? Oh, no, no, no. Just, just uh, give me a second. I'm just... Well, you damn well should be. Please tell me about the encounters. Um, what, how did it begin? It all started on a cold night in April. And the hundreds of people who are having the same dream with the smiling man. I have hundreds of calls, and this ain't a coincidence. This is real. His people will break up from the cracks of hell and face. We have seen this before. The rivers of blood and the disappearance of hundreds of thousands of babies taken by our government to appease the star gods by means of sacrifice. I have word that these politicians are all demon-possessed folks. Believe me, there are videos of the president during the winter time with flies on him. Our government is owned by the reptilians of planet Zipton. We shall not surrender because we know the truth. Now, God. a word from Sister Angelica on how to make the perfect pig for a hat. Pig for a hat can protect you from the harm of market for radiation. I'll bribe you by our government. If y'all have no ready, go to our website to purchase your own pig for a hat kit starting at $45.99. Also subscribe to our website www.projectspeaks.org for our weekly show starting at two hundred and twenty dollars a month. Stop resisting now. Resist! Yeah. Hello, everyone. We will start by taking our life to tin foil. Get a pair of scissors and cut a straight line along the foil.
gonna tell you about calling this number in 1900. Phones are compromised. Use the keys. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, okay. Pudding, cheese, Francis, fridge, spank fucking man star. Francis, fridge, spank, thank, fucking man, man star. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Pudding equals got. Uh, cheese equals A. Francis is Francis. 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 New. New. Fra Fra Francis equals new. Okay. Uh, fridge equals fridge. Uh, spank equals stank. Fucking equals fucking. Uh, man star equals God. All right. Got a new fridge. Thank fucking God. You called me at this hour to tell me you got a new fridge? Here I thought you made contact! Don't you want to know? Best fridge you can get. Top well, of the line, that, they say. That's, that's outstanding, Tom. But I'm, I'm doing some important research right now. Hmm? How's your pig doing? His name is Lewis! You know... Got the flu. You've never seen your snow so stuffy before. He cries and moans all day and all night. I mean, uh, breaks my, breaks my, he ain't even eating anymore. Breaks my heart. Breaks my heart to see him like this. You know, it all started the night of the light came, you know? The night I was telling you about. Are you saying you're a pig? Lewis! Are you saying that Lewis might have seen something? Not might have seen something. I know he saw something. Lewis is smart. Oh, uh, huh. Is he? Okay, well then, tell me more about him. Well, he had a personality all his own. Well, we used to watch TV together, and he'd always light up every time Enter the Dragon came on. He'd pay extra close attention. I see. A, a pig who enjoys Bruce Lee movies. Oh, his favorite, his favorite uh, snack was lasagna with a little Parmesan cheese sprinkled on top. Oh, noted. Lasagna with extra Parmesan on top. He doesn't care for the classics now. He doesn't eat. He just has this blank stare in his eyes like he's trying to figure out something in his head. How what he saw could even be possible? Well, did you take him to the vet? Oh, well, I'm afraid he had been compromised. I saw a black unmarked car. The hell right old Dodge house with uh, tinted windows. So I wanted to get a closer look. I put on some dark face paint and I hid in Doc's bushes. And, you know, I could see clear through the windows, even with the sun glare. Sun? Well, then why the dark face paint? I was in full-on camouflage. I saw men in black suits squizzing them. Why would they want anything to do with a small-town veterinarian, Mr. Cho? Well, you know, I can, I can understand why you would be skeptical. It's not just about Lewis. You know, Martin Jacobs, my neighbor, same thing happened to his French poodle. Same blank expression, wandering about in the haze, barking at things that weren't even there. Uh, Eliza Merritt, across the road, her two German shepherds went missing the night of the lake. And Timmy, his bulldog, wanders around town. I saw him at the end of my road, staring up in the skies even when it was dark. Next morning, he was still there looking up. They all got one thing in common. The night the big light came, not one animal in this area has been the same. Explain to me this. Ever since the night of the light in the big forest, I haven't seen Piper. Who's Piper? She's a blue jay. I haven't seen her in weeks now. She even hung a bird's nest on the barn. And I used to put a lot of seed out under it, and she'd fly out, grab some, and go. That seed's been out there for weeks. You know, birds do like to fly around a lot. Perhaps they made nest someplace else. You know, funny, because I haven't seen a bird around here in weeks since the big light in the forest. Bring them back, you little green bastards! I want my birds! Let's get back to the night of the encounter. 
All right, so please continue with that, Mr. Jones. Well, I finished talking to Tom about his damn fridge. And he was telling me about how his son was coming up to visit him, which I told him he needs to break all communications with him. But he got all emotional and he said he couldn't do such a, such a thing breaking on damn ties. Well, why would you tell him not to communicate with his own son? I mean, had, had he done something to upset you or? Because he works for the post office, damn it. Never trust a man who works for the government. Because he works for the post office? <laughs> Believe me, right? Uh, never have a kid. But if my boy ever worked for the post office, he would no longer be a son of mine. You really do not trust any facet of the government, do you? Can't say I do. You know, the post office is an honorable profession. My uncle was a postman. <sighs> What a shame. We could debate the postal worker's place in society all day, Mr. Jones, but I, I think we'd be better served if we just stuck on topic. That, don't you agree? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just get back to the encounter. Now, I, I know this is hard for you to talk about, but you were saying that you were working on your uh, protective gear when Tom called, and then what happened? I must have fallen asleep. I mean, I was up very, very late doing a lot, a lot of research. All right. Do your worst demon hellhounds! Chinese, damn it! You tech nerds trying to take over the world! No foreign government is going to take over my radio! Oh my gosh! that the batteries were out of the radio, but it was still functional. Honey, do I stutter when I speak? It's an all-American radio, damn it! You can call me Amanda, and I suppose my next question is, how is an American radio any different from any other kind of radio? Uh, an American radio ain't supposed to act so queer. First, I thought I was being recorded by the Russian government. God damn foreign spies. Foreign spies. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's when I saw it. That's when you saw what? The light. You saw a light. Not just any light. A green light. And the significance of a green light is what exactly? The color green is the color of the reptilian flag! Ah, uh, I see. And you know this how? I know you think I have UFOs always on my mind, right? That every little sound I hear outside my window is some alien sneaking across the roof. But I am of sound mind. I always use my brain and I think logically. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so, so then what happened after you saw these lights? I thought logically with my brain. Yes, yes, I know that, but <laughs> what was your first thought? I mean, you know that you do like to think logically with your brain, yes. Uh, first, uh, first instinct, um, maybe a car. And I'm guessing it wasn't hard to roll that out because cars don't have green lights. It wasn't a car. See, well, there you go questioning me again. Right? I, 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 I was thinking about it even while it was happening. It, 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 was, 
it wasn't a car, fireworks, plane, nothing. It was an unchanging green light with zero noise, copper tape, and smoke. There was smoke? Kept slithering through the cracks like a barn snake. I immediately went to look for a weapon. But I, uh, I keep my handgun in the animal cracker box in my house. Wait, you keep a loaded handgun in an animal cracker box? Believe me, nobody ever checks the animal crackers. What about a kid? Don't, don't you think that's a bit dangerous? I never let those things set foot in my house. They're as dangerous as the graves. Guns were not an option. I, I couldn't just run down to my house and expose my position. So, I got a two by four and did some investigating. Investigating? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I tiptoed like a little kitty cat and I peeked through the barn cracks ever so slightly and that's when I saw it. And it was worse than I expected. So what? The reptilians. The reptilians. Yeah, only the most dangerous, vile creatures in every dimension. So, aliens. You're fucking right! I heard them speaking in their alien tongue. And boy, did that piss me off. Now, why did that piss you off more than them landing on your property? I thought this was some no alien fly zone. Believe me, it did. Hey, but there's something about foreigners talking to each other about, oh, God knows what. It just, just, just rattles my chain. <sighs> then, then I heard them laughing. And that got me really enraged. So I decided I was going to kick their little green asses back to planet. Fuck yourselves! Was it a good idea to attack them? My wife says I should think uh, before I speak and act. Or maybe it was a, it's not always the right time to say something, or, oh, maybe that's why she divorced me after three weeks. So did your alien ass kicking go well? Absolutely. ready to feast on live flesh. myself a bar warrior. Been in some outstanding fights in my day. Hey, who's the Daisy now? Thanks for the 20. But nothing. Nothing compared to the battle I had that night. So you would consider the encounter as a battle? Damn straight! Man yeah. alive! I had some pretty heavy words. Oh, so good. I felt, I felt like an artiste to death! <laughs> you ain't nothing but a six foot tall girl! <laughs> Not like it! Beating a pack of savage extraterrestrial beings, oh, I felt like a true American hero in those moments. A true protector of the earth. God damn what I'll do for my country. You don't 
scare me, hiding in the shadows. I am Rick Jones, protector of the earth. Just the places that they speak American. Yeah. But tonight, tonight, I am gonna kill you. Just for the record, how many aliens did you fight? Too many. I would kill them, but they wouldn't always die. Oh boy, did I show them who's boss though. Oh my God, you again! Ah! This is what happens when you fuck with the earth. Can you hear me, demon? You said this is what happens when you fuck with the earth? <laughs> Word for word, or should I say, world to world. Uh-huh. Everything was going great. I mean, you're really outstanding. Let's stop the party. Hey, man. That's what I saw. That's all. The two-headed one. What piece was eating my what? cheese ball? My cheese ball! I can smell his breath across the room. Damn thing probably takes the worst shit. Oh. I broke my two by four and my two hands, and then my father was stuck in one of the demon's stomach. There was slime all over the place, and all I could find was, uh, was, was a pen. That was completely silent. I felt no physical pain. You know that kind of feeling when you get drunk? No, I can't say that I do. It was exactly like that. Peace. Anger, confusion, all rolled up into one. It felt like I was like floating on a sea of light. And I was a pigman dressed in a bow tie with a bottle of whiskey and a shot glass with my name on it. A pig with whiskey and shot glass? <laughs> I'd never turned down a drink in my entire life, even if that drink came from a pig. You know, Lewis and I used to get drunk all the time. Handed me the shot glass. And then I woke up. Okay. Well, that was very interesting, Rick. And then what happened? They were gone. The place was blown to shit, cheese balls everywhere. I spent weeks up trying to figure out what happened. Maybe it was some kind of logical explanation. I thought maybe, maybe I drank too much. But I didn't drink that much that night. You know what we have in common? I can fly. I, I can fly if I want to, damn it. Huh? No government gravity feels control me. I thought maybe it was my, my blood pressure was high. But that wasn't the case. Just take me! Take me, damn you! Take me from this plastic world! Maybe I'm just confused. I can't stop running through my head. Bet you have some real battle scars to show. <laughs> Not anymore. No photos? Oh, no, no, no. I, I couldn't risk it. Yeah. If the CIA found out, they'd put me and, and Lewis in a padded six by six cell and with our minds erased. <sighs> no photos. Well, so how are the animals? How about your pig? Any improvements? Mm. It's been weeks and weeks. Timmy, Lewis, the rest of them, they're all still the same. Nothing's improved with Lewis. But he's a trooper, that one, I'll tell you that much. Hell, I guess seeing what he saw could break even the strongest of people. It's just, it's just not the same without seeing him being his old happy self around the house. I understand.
Excuse me, we need the room in five minutes. Oh. Yeah. All right, I got it. Well, Mr. Jones, I think I have everything I need. I wish you all the best, and especially in Lewis's recovery. So if you have anything more to add to the story, or if there's any kind of update of any, any kind, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Here's my card. You know, there are, there are some people in the town who kind of think I'm like crazy. No, 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 not at all. But Just take care of yourself, Mr. Jones. Uh, Alice, um, Amy, uh, uh, Audrey, Amanda. 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 Yeah. Amanda. You be careful, all right? If you choose to go forward with my encounter, and I hope you do, all right? I, I can't tell who it's going to hang. Disclosing such sensitive information could be really dangerous for the both of us. Government space detective. I'll take my chances. And you're sure about using your name? <laughs> Let them try to lock me up, damn it. We're saving lives here! Soon everyone will know. Just watch, Lewis. Huh? I told her. Killed them all. Huh? Those little green bastards. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Lewis. We're famous. Huh? You and me, buddy. When one thinks about the topic of aliens, most think of Area 51 or the X-Files. Others think about Steven Spielberg's E.T. and ridiculous flying bicycles and luring aliens into your bedroom with Reese's Pieces. Quite predatory behavior, if you ask me. The big cliche question one always hears at a bar or a friend's parties, out of all the galaxies, are we alone? Well, if one were to ask me, do you think we've been visited? I would say, why would a species intelligent enough to travel here want to have anything to do with us? I don't think we are worth visiting. We are the big embarrassment of the galaxy, if you ask me. Nonetheless, we all have that distant relative who has that UFO story. A story so convincing that no matter how hard you try to disprove it, you can't. How could they tell a story so packed full of detail when they didn't even graduate from the sixth grade? You can only listen to the story. In the end, it could be another booze-induced tale, or it could be real. and gives you a little hope, or makes you shudder when looking at the stars. This is the story of Rick Jones. It all started a cold night in April.